Case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. New at noon, people at a north side apartment complex had to leave their homes after a fire started. This on Blanco Road near Wurzbark Parkway. Fire crews say something was burning in a fireplace inside one of those units and then spread up the flu. Crews tell us the fire did not affect any other units and the person inside that apartment where the fire started was able to get out safely. U.S. Marine Trevor Reed is now back in Texas after nearly three years in Russian prisons and months of diplomacy. Reed was released to U.S. officials in exchange for a Russian man serving time in the U.S. for drug trafficking. Jonathan Coto joins us now live. Jonathan, we know Reed arrived here in San Antonio early this morning. Do we know where he's being taken to? What have you been able to learn? Yeah, we're learning Reed may have potentially been brought here to Bamsi, but of course that's information that's pending confirmation. One thing that I can tell you for sure, David and Alicia, is that after 985 days, former U.S. Marine Trevor Reed is officially a free man. Let's take a look at the video that shows Reed arriving at Blackland to Air Force Base. The 30-year-old Freed is part of an international top secret prisoner swap carried out Wednesday. Reed's father says his son described the swap as something straight out of a spy movie. His parents expressing concern over Trevor's appearance and well-being. Let's take a listen. He looked uh, horrible. It looked to me like he had two black eyes. A doctor that we have here said that that's uh, a symptom of malnourishment so it's he's he just looked terrible to us now reed was visiting his girlfriend in moscow in 2019 when he was arrested after a night of heavy drinking the russians allege he started a fight and assaulted a police officer reed and the u.s government denying those claims and say they were fabricated adding video evidence shows the incident as described by the russians never happened the senior biden administration's officials say discussions with the russians intensified over recent weeks reads becoming sick his health deteriorating amid fears he had contracted tuberculosis this is a story that we're going to continue to follow closely and update you with the latest as more information is made available reporting live outside of bamsi jonathan koto ksat 12 news Thank you, Jonathan. And new at noon, the mugshot of Wagner High School teacher arrested on child pornography charges has just been released. Take a look at this man. Police say 50-year-old Corey Davidson is charged with possession of child pornography. That's a third-degree felony. He was arrested at his home on Lincoln Creek on the city's far northwest side. And investigators say Davidson sent three images of child pornography over email back in February. The Wagner High School website lists Davidson as an art teacher on campus. And according to an email from the district, Davidson has been placed on administrative leave. A new day has not brought any new answers for homicide detectives who are investigating a triple shooting. Two of the three people who were shot while sitting in a car on the city's northwest side late last night died of their wounds. The parking lot where it happened sits between a bar and an apartment complex on Fredericksburg Road, not far from the medical drive. The Katrina Weber reports it has been the site of other deadly violence recently. San Antonio police officers called to a shooting before 10 last night found three victims still inside their car, but they quickly realized they had many more questions about what happened in this parking lot in the 5500 block of Fredericksburg Road. It's still very preliminary in this investigation. Um, ICID detectives are out here working hard trying to uh, figure out what was the motive in this murder. Even so, they were not able to find out much. Police say a man and woman who were shot died of their wounds. Another woman was rushed to a hospital in critical condition. Very few witnesses. There was very few people who saw this happen. Some people's cars were still there this morning with signs of being hit by the gunfire. The parking lot sits between Highlander Bar and an apartment complex. Police couldn't say if the victims had ties to either place. This is at least the second time recently that there's been a shooting in this very parking lot. But so far, no one with the bar or the apartments has anything to say about it. On the morning of March 1st, police found two men shot here, one dead from his wounds. It was another case shrouded in mystery, but this time police hope the public will help them solve it. Anything you heard, anything you saw, uh, cameras, anything helps uh, the detectives in an investigation. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
New at noon, a man is still in the hospital nearly a week after getting hit by a driver. That's according to San Antonio police. Officers tell us the victim was riding his bicycle near Evergreen Street and Main Avenue back on April 22nd. That's when police say a driver in a four door BMW hit him and then kept driving. That's a picture of the suspect's vehicle on your screen. The victim has serious injuries and at last check, police said he was still in critical condition. Now officers are hoping witnesses will come forward to help them find the driver responsible. A man caught at the crossfire during a shooting at an apartment complex is killed. This noon, police are still looking for answers and the person who fired those bullets. Back on February 3rd, police say a woman was driving her vehicle in the parking lot of the Antioch Village Apartments. That's on the northeast side near I-10 and North WW White Road. Officers say three people in a black car were following her. When she got out of her car, those people started shooting at her. Police say Paul Wilson was hit by that gunfire as he was walking in that same parking lot. He was pronounced dead at the scene. If you can help police with either of these cases, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. In San Antonio, police still don't know what led up to a shooting on the city's west side after they say the victim lied to them. It happened just after 10 last night on Reese Street, not far from North General McMullen, and that's where police found a 27-year-old man with a gunshot wound to the leg. He was taken to the hospital and is doing okay. Officers say he was not cooperating and actually gave false information about a person who, it turns out, was not involved. A fire in a kitchen starts burning out of control and spreads inside a home on the northeast side. This is near Nacogdoches Road and Thousand Oaks Drive. Firefighters say that fire ended up spreading to the garage and then up into the attic. Fire crews were able to put out those flames. A family of four and their dog made it out safe, but are now without a home. The American Red Cross was called to assist them. Fire is not. The fire is now under investigation. The South Texas Veterans Health Care System is holding a veterans hiring fair. It's happening this weekend at the Audie L. Murphy Memorial Veterans Hospital Recreation Center. Full-time housekeeping aides are being hired for both the San Antonio facility as well as the Kerrville VA Medical Center. On-site interviews and on-the-spot hiring are possible during that hiring fair. Still coming up this half hour, a Wagner alum will be watching and waiting for his name to be called during the NFL draft starting tonight. Larry Mears with more from him coming up in sports. And another drug company is working to get younger children vaccinated against COVID-19. A look at Moderna's latest efforts after the break. We have an update on the coronavirus pandemic here in Bear County. Case numbers slowly rising, and that's why Metro Health has moved the community's risk level into the mild category. It had been in the low category for some time now. According to the latest update, 115 more people are now fighting the virus in our community. No new deaths were reported yesterday, but 52 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. 12 of them are in the intensive care unit and nine people are on ventilators. And we've got more on the latest on that fight against COVID-19. Moderna announced that it's requesting emergency use authorization from the FDA for its vaccine for children as young as six months old. ABC's Ike Jachi has more for us. Today, Moderna asking for FDA emergency use authorization to administer its vaccine to the only remaining ineligible group of Americans, children aged six months to five years old. This is a safe vaccine. We've shown it to be safe in this study, in this age group, and it has good protection, good, good production of antibodies. Last month, Moderna announced positive data from two doses of its pediatric COVID-19 vaccine, claiming it generated a strong immune response with no significant risks and that it reduced the risk of symptomatic infection by up to 51%. With summer around the corner, parents desperate to protect their young children from the virus are growing frustrated. I want you, Joe Biden, to call the FDA and tell them that they need to act with all possible speed. 
Across the country, new infection rates have reached their highest point in nearly two months. More than 47,000 new cases each day. That's up more than 25% in the last week. Hospital admissions are up too. 29 states and territories are reporting increases, and in the coming weeks, public health experts forecast the national totals to increase for the first time since January. That rise in infections coming as Dr. Anthony Fauci sparked a big controversy when he told PBS the pandemic phase in the U.S. was over. We don't have 900,000 new infections a day and tens and tens and tens of thousands of hospitalizations and thousands of deaths. We are at a low level right now. He since clarified that he meant to say that the pandemic is shifting to a different phase. What now, in terms of hospitalization rates, not all hospitals and states are collecting or sharing their COVID-19 data, so those totals are likely being undercounted. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Outside with live cam, let's see. Ooh, a lot of clouds out there. <laughs> wow. Not for long, right? Or at least it's going to disperse a little bit? Yeah, we'll see some sun this afternoon. Those clouds will gradually break up and we'll certainly see a lot more sun than what we saw yesterday. Yesterday was a very cloudy day. We'll get to your forecast. We'll even get you a sneak peek of the weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Today, the aquifer is down one tenth of a foot and in your Thursday pollen count, molds and oak are high today. Pecan and grass are low. We'll be right back. I think, was it last year, it would rain, and then the sun would come out for a couple of days, and then it would rain, and then the sun would come out for a couple of days. We got in that really last nice year, pattern. I feel like that's a... Like a long time ago? No. Oh. I was going to say like a normal thing, right? Oh. The sun will come out eventually? It's, it's been more like that at least this week. Um, thankful that we picked up some rain early in the week. And now I think this year, David, it's been like morning clouds and then some afternoon yeah. sun and not so much with the rain. Unfortunately, we will get some sun this afternoon. Yesterday wound up being a pretty cloudy day and we've had a lot of clouds so far today. Even a little bit of rain. I drove through a very small brief shower on my way into work. You may have experienced some of the same on the roads earlier today. 76 now at the airport and things are starting to lighten up a bit out there. Now we've still got a lot of cloud cover around especially west of I-35, but spots that are starting to see a little bit more sun from LaGrange down to Victoria, Beeville, even Pleasanton temperatures there starting to climb into the 80s. Meanwhile, with a bit more cloud cover in place from Holotus up to Bernie Stage and Comfort temperatures there are still in the 70s. But over the next several hours, we expect this cloud cover to continue to break up. We won't see total clearing by any means, but we will get some peaks of sun in, and that should help to warm us up generally into the mid to upper or 80s inching closer to 90 along and south of the highway 90 corridor and then some low 80s across the hill country. But with some sun, I uh, will warm up a bit more today. We're going to have a steady breeze in place all day long. Our winds are out of the south southeast between about 10 and 20 miles per hour in many locations, with the exception of comfort. You've got calm winds there for now, but we expect a steady wind in place for the remainder of the day out of the south southeast between about 10 and 20 miles per hour. Could even feel a little windy at times with a few gusts up near 25 30 miles per hour this afternoon and this evening. Tomorrow will be a lot like today with the morning clouds, afternoon sun, and also another windy day at times on Friday. More wind on Sunday. Not as gusty on Saturday, but Saturday actually features a low chance of rain late in the day. Let me show you the setup here, and I want to reiterate something Justin Horn was talking about this morning on Good Morning San Antonio. If you've got planned Saturday, you're going to be just fine. This chance of uh, low chance of a few storms will come late in the day. We're talking the evening and the nighttime hours and the setup that we're watching here is a very weak frontal boundary trying to work in from the north as we get into Saturday evening. If it can get far enough south and if these storms can break the cap or the lid on the atmosphere, we could have some isolated thunder showers north of San Antonio by the evening that could try to drop south and wander our way. A 
Again, the coverage of any rain that we see would be low, but we could have a couple of strong storms on our hands if they can get going. Again, that's late in the day on Saturday, and we'll keep a close eye on that potential for you. Otherwise, not much rain in the forecast over the next week or so. A look ahead to the rest of your Thursday again with some clearing after lunchtime. We'll see our high temperatures generally jump into the mid to upper 80s. If you've got plans this evening, it will be warm and humid, but again, the wind will hang with us for the rest of the day. So even though it'll be on the warm and muggy side, that breeze will help us out with winds gusting up to 25, 30 miles per hour. At times that wind just helps it from feeling too warm and sticky out there at any given time. Very similar weather for your Friday. Then we get into that late day chance of a few storms on Saturday. Sunday, also a rain free day. We'll be watching for some overnight showers and storms potentially lingering into early Monday of next week and also a low chance of some thunder showers Wednesday next week. So nothing as widespread as what we were treated to early in the week, but at least these low rain chances are still hanging on for now, guys, which is exactly what we need. Thank you so much, Katie. Mm -hmm. So Alicia was talking about the Cowboys draft okay. news now at 11 and she was wondering, you know, who they're going to pick. So I said, ask Larry. Larry. It's still up in the Larry, air. Larry, help me. We think they need to go here at KSAT 12 Sports. We think they need to go offensive lineman first and then defensive lineman. But who knows what Jerry Jones is thinking up there in Arlington. But hey, right here in town, we have two locals among four or five local athletes to Marvin Leal and Sarah McCormick, who are hoping to hear their names called this weekend. Plus, the Houston Texans are reportedly eyeing Sauce Gardner. Now, what's up with his nickname, Sauce? Coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. So tonight at 7 right here in KSAT 12, the first round of the 2022 NFL Draft will get underway. Judson alum and Texas A&M football great DeMarvin Leal is expected to go in rounds 1, 2, or 3, and he should be the first pick when it comes to San Antonio area, guys. His Judson Rocket teammate and UTSA Roadrunner star running back, Sincere McCormick, is also ready to hear his name called. Both guys are excited to rep San Antonio and Judson at the next level. It feels right. It feels, you know, it's a blessing to be in the position, but it definitely just feels right. You know, I've been working all my life for this since I was like three, four years old. So it's, it's what I've dreamed of, it's what I manifested. So it's just, it feels right. A Judson product to, you know, achieve higher things. And like I said, it goes back to just believing in yourself and handling that adversity that, you know, anything can happen, anything's possible. Um, like, you know, just being able to show myself that one of the, you know, Judson product is, is big time and hopefully, you know, once we get to the next level, we'll continue to repping. A Wagner alum and UTSA offensive lineman Spencer Burford is also hoping to hear his name called during the next three days. And the same goes for his roadrunner teammate and cornerback Tariq Woolen. UTSA football is definitely on the map and growing with each NFL draft. Football is Burford's life and job, and now he wants a chance to compete so he can feed his family. Right. This, I mean, you have to have a dedication to it. Um, at the end of the day, you have to look a grown man in the eye and be able to take food off his plate. That's basically what it is. Like we're going here to take grown men's jobs, men with families, and so sometimes it's not personal, but at the same time, it is, because it's either eat or starve at this point. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough business to be in, but at the same day, it's very rewarding on the back end. So I mean, it has its pros and cons, but I'm just glad to be in a position that I am. I'm not really worried about too much, but it would be nice to go first three rounds, and that's something I've been hearing for first three rounds, second round, third round, and stuff like that. But I really don't let it get to me. And it's just a blessing to be in that position. So I wouldn't have any in the way. All right, is the sauce heading to Houston? We'll soon find out. The Houston Texans currently have the number three and number 13 overall picks in the first round. Last week, general manager Nick Casario said he's pretty sure they'll draft at number three, but number 13 is up in the air. They could trade it up to move up or down. You just never know. Now, they certainly need a lot of help. One guy they are rumored to be interested in is Cincinnati cornerback Ahmad Sauce Gardner. He's good, and he comes with a cool nickname, Sauce. A1 Sauce Sweepy Gardner was the nickname. That nickname been sticking with me since forever. My little league coach, Coach Tez, gave me the nickname. He said he saw a vision that he don't think I seen. He said that name fit perfectly with me. When I got to Cincinnati, they didn't just start calling me it. You know, I had to earn it when I got there. All the Cincinnati fans, they all just started calling me Sauce. Sauce Gardner takes it to the house! Man, I feel like that chain is pretty simple. It says Sauce on there but it has little drops under each letter, you know, to symbolize, you know, the name. 
Every time I step on the field, you know, I make sure I got the sauce. All right, David, I'm going to set you up. Taco, <laughs> Taco Charlton is now with the Saints. Okay. So if the Saints draft sauce, what do we have? You got taco sauce. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it, taco sauce. Right there on your Ocho sandwich. <laughs> the big Ocho. The big Ocho. Wow, too much fun. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, Larry. The FDA wants to ban certain types of cigarettes. Why the agency says moves could this move could save thousands of lives. And scammers are pretending to work for banks in order to trick people into handing over thousands of dollars. How a legal loophole is helping banks avoid being held liable for that lost money. Coming up after the break. And new today at five, we're talking grocery money. It's just costing us more to put dinner on the table. Food prices are up about 10% over last year, so it pays to make changes and tweak your habits. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz talks to Aaron Chase, the $5 dinner mom who shares her strategies that may just work for you too. Today at five after Entertainment Tonight. Lawmakers are asking the company behind a popular payment app some tough questions as scammers continue to take advantage of the app Zelle. They're using it to trick people out of money, sometimes duped into handing over thousands of dollars. ABC's Beck and Wor Becky Worley explains how the scam works. It's affected me financially a lot. School teacher Megan McDonald telling ABC station Denver 7 she lost thousands of dollars after someone claiming to be a Wells Fargo employee called her. They asked if I or anyone had spent $3,000 on my account, which I told them no. McDonald says the person texted her confirmation ID and told her to protect her money by going into her bank account and transferring it to a Zelle account in her name. But the whole thing was a scam. The account belonged to a fraudster, the money gone. Zelle is a mobile payment transfer service that's embedded in your banking app. It allows you to send money to people directly, bank to bank. ABC stations across the country reporting on customers saying they've lost thousands through Zelle transactions that they were tricked into making by texts and phone calls from scammers claiming to be from their banks. It's just scary. The money's gone. He had my name, date of birth, and my account number. Who the heck would have all that information? And the call dropped, and it was gone. And so were the, so was the money. I was shivering. I was crying. That was all the money I had. Now Congress asking for answers. This week, Senators Elizabeth Warren and Robert Menendez sending a letter to Zell's CEO calling reports of a rise in fraud and scams on Zell disturbing, adding it's putting millions of consumers at risk. The banks are well aware of these scams, but have done little to enhance Zell's security or reimburse defrauded consumers. The operator of Zelle Early Warning Services tells us it's reviewing the senator's letter. After the Denver station contacted Wells Fargo, McDonald says she received a full refund. Wells Fargo telling GMA, we never want to see anyone become the victim of a scam. And we're actively working to raise awareness of common scams, telling us they're sharing messages and alerts with its customers. That was ABC's Becky Worley reporting. But here's how scammers are getting away with all this. They're taking advantage of a legal loophole in existing fraud laws over what counts as an authorized payment. If the fraudster can uh, convince you to send the money willingly, even if it's for, for, through fraudulent means, then you are not protected. That transaction is considered authorized under current federal regulations. And since it appears that these fraudulent transactions were authorized by consumers, the banks are not liable. Today, lawmakers are meeting to talk about closing that loophole so that if a scammer uses social engineering to dupe a consumer into authorizing one of these transfers, there would be greater liability for banks. And that could prompt banks to increase security on their end. The Food and Drug Administration is now working to ban menthol from being used in the production of cigarettes. The agency says this is a necessary step to help protect public health. Nearly 19 million people smoke menthol cigarettes, and according to the FDA, most of them are minorities. The FDA says taking menthol out of cigarettes could result in saving 650,000 premature deaths over the next four decades. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says overall smoking rates hit an all-time low in 2018, but they add smoking is still one of the top causes of preventable death. 
Economic growth in the U.S. not picking up steam. The Bureau of Economic Analysis released data on the nation's gross domestic product today. The GDP dropped 1.4% between January and March. That's a big difference from the final quarter of 2021 when the measure grew nearly 7%. It's also the worst performance for the GDP since midway through 2020 when the pandemic was in full swing. Taking a live look with live cam. It's been a cloudy start and that's how it's kind of been. I've actually enjoyed it because you can feel the difference at home with the AC. I don't have to crank it up too much. <laughs> that's true. And you know what? I was thinking earlier this week when, you know, we didn't get out of the 60s. It was so unseasonably cool. I was like, it's not going to feel like this again until like October, Ooh. maybe. I'm just saying well. our, our cool days are numbered. <laughs> That's for sure. So we can thank the clouds for that. Uh, we are starting to see a few more peaks of blue sky and things are lightening up here on this live cam shot near the airport. 83 at Stinton. We've got a few more breaks in the clouds across southern Bear County and also east of San Antonio. So if you're Gonzalez, Floresville, even Seguin, you're starting to see a lot more sun at this hour and this cloud cover will continue to gradually filter out and break up as the afternoon goes on. So heading to pick up the uh, kiddos or waiting for them by the bus stop after school. Temperatures will be in the 80s later this afternoon. A warm and humid Thursday, but the wind will be steady all day long. South southeast winds 10 to 20 miles per hour, so that'll keep that humidity from making it feel too sticky out there at any point today. Coming up in just a bit in the full forecast, I'm going to show you this day in weather history. We had a very significant severe thunderstorm this day one year ago. I'll just show you the newest drought monitor and get you another sneak peek of the weekend forecast. That'll be along in just a bit. David. Thank you, Katie. CNN is reporting that Rudy Giuliani is scheduled to appear before the January 6th House Select Committee next month. Giuliani was subpoenaed by the committee in January. The committee is accusing Giuliani of promoting false claims of election fraud and sought to convince state legislatures to overturn election results. The former New York mayor is facing a host of legal issues, including allegations of illegal foreign lobbying involving Ukraine. Dominion Voting Systems also has filed a billion dollar defamation lawsuit against Giuliani for his election fraud claims. The Department of Justice announced it's launching the National Law Enforcement Lab. It's aimed at promoting cons cons constitutional policing and building trust in communities. The DOJ says the free training and resource center will let police learn from the from in the field experience, how to best promote a healthy relationship between police and the community. The lab and other resources follow the collapse of efforts to pass police form legislation. The DOJ says it's part of the efforts to train officers, reduce use of force incidents, and use de-escalation tactics on the streets. So coming up this half hour, the Texans have a chance to really improve their team, starting with two first-round draft picks tonight. Defense is on their mind right now. They're in mirrors with more on that coming up in sports. And a Harry Potter fan turned her love of the fantasy series into a real-life creation. How she used the books to fabricate a magical prom night. A high school senior went dress shopping for her prom dress at the library. Yeah, just take a look at this. That is impressive. She took her love of books and turned it into a very unique outfit made from the pages of her favorite story. ABC's Will Gans has more. Haley Koch is a Harry Potter super fan who is determined to make prom night as magical as possible. The moment where she showed up to the Yule Ball and like everyone's like turning around and looking at her. Oh, girl, I know what that feels like. The Prairie Grove High School senior having her own Hermione Granger moment at prom, thanks to her enchanting gown, which she made from scratch. I really love the idea of paper because I'm like, I'm a president of my book club at Prairie Grove. So I already love reading and I was like, well, just use my favorite series. That's right. Haley making her dress out of the pages of Harry Potter. Quite a feat with no wand to help her. It only took me four days, but two of those were all nighters. Haley and her stepmom watching all the movies while they worked. Staples, hot glue, and all those pages. Transfiguring two beat up copies of the novels bought at a secondhand bookstore into this gown. What was the paper cut situation like? 
the pages are so soft. Like, it, it's actually not that bad at all. After a bad breakup, Haley deciding to take her younger brother to prom with her and her friends. And she says the night was better than fiction. Everyone was looking at you. Everyone was stupefied, for lack of a better word, by this dress. <laughs> You had that Hermione moment. Yes, I know. It, it, every Potterhead's dream. So Haley did bring an extra dress to prom with her so she could really bust a move on the dance floor. And by the way, she's headed to University of Arkansas on a scholarship to study psychology in the fall. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. That's very cool. It reminded me a lot of the new Corella movie. Oh, yeah. Making, yeah. you know, making her own creation yeah. and becomes the Corella we love. That's, that's a very impressive. It looked like a very yeah. sophisticated. Yeah. yeah. Very well done. Like she went way out. Very fancy. When I was a high school, and I, you would not have gotten me to make a dress for four days. No way. So very impressive. And yeah, it looks really pretty. Today, the aquifer is down one tenth of a foot to 648.3. And in your pollen count, yes, molds are still high with a count of around 2300. Oak is high as well with a count of 620 pecan low with the count of 70 and grass is low with the count of 30. We'll talk more about what the upcoming weekend has in store. Our next low chance of a few storms coming up. Hello everyone. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. Elon Musk's request to exit his deal with the SEC to have a Tesla lawyer screen his tweets has been denied by a U.S. district judge. That deal was made in a 2018 a settlement for falsely tweeting that he had funding secured to take Tesla private, and that sent Tesla shares soaring. Now, the judge said that Musk entered that agreement freely, and it doesn't amount to violating his right to free speech. Meanwhile, Apple has opened their first DIY product repair store. The online venture allows customers to make iPhone repairs themselves, like replacing the display, camera, or even the battery. Customers have the option also to rent individual tools for a week at $49 plus free shipping. The program will launch first in the U.S. before expanding to other countries. And home prices jumped almost 20% year over year in the month of February. That according to the Case-Shiller Index, with Phoenix, Miami, and other Sunbelt cities seeing the highest jumps. Mortgage rates also climbing fast. Monthly payments on a 30-year loan are up $550 from just a year ago. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. So Katie Blake got all this rain, and all of a sudden the grass grew, and now I got to mow. So when's a good day to mow? <laughs> or wash your car. Or what, yeah. yeah that, that needs to be done, too. Yeah, we've got some low-end rain chancel, chances sprinkled in, no pun intended, over oh. the next week or so. They're spread out, and it won't be anything as widespread as what we saw earlier in the week. So chances are you can get the mowing done and also get the car washed. We're going to talk about Saturday's late-day isolated storm chance again coming up in just a minute. No rain this afternoon. We had a few sprinkles out there this morning, but as skies continue to clear out this afternoon, no chance of rain. Temperatures climbing into the mid to upper 80s. Around San Antonio, we'll top you out right around 86, right about 4 or 5 o'clock today. Notice the south wind steady for the remainder of the afternoon and even into this evening. So if you've got evening plans tonight, just know it'll be warm and muggy, but we'll have a good breeze in place. Now, when you ago today we were dealing with a severe weather day and just to reiterate here it's in very bold letters but this is not current radar this is a year ago today which was a Wednesday evening and at about 745 we had a severe thunderstorm with a tornado warning on it a supercell storm moving through Medina County so there's Hondo right there in the middle of the screen and you may recall this is the storm that dropped a massive hailstone in Medina County. It was so large that thankfully the folks that had to experience this were able to save it in the freezer and then it was officially measured and verified as the largest hailstone in Texas history with a weight of 1.26 pounds, a circumference of more than 19 inches, a diameter of more than six inches. And again, that makes it the largest hailstone that's fallen in Texas that has been able to be picked up measured and verified. I'd say there are probably some storms across very rural parts of the state that probably also drop some large hail, but we'd never know about it because there was no one to go and get the hail. But nonetheless, that was one year ago today. We do have 
chances of storms in the forecast through early next week, but coverage is going to be very low and the chance is going to be conditional, especially as we get into late in the day on Saturday. So here's the setup heading into the day Saturday. There will be a front off to our north and a couple of forecast models want to bring this front a bit farther south, closer to the Highway 90 corridor. And the potential here with this setup is that we could have a few storms pop up along this frontal boundary to our north, break through the cap or lit on the atmosphere and then one or two could become strong or severe late in the day on Saturday. If that happens, they could pop up to our north and then try to wander our direction late Saturday. That's something we'll keep a close eye on over the next couple of days. And of course, we'll keep you updated. So keep checking that weekend forecast in your KSAT Weather Authority app. Speaking of rain, we've got our new drought monitor in today. This is last week's drought monitor. And as I progress forward here, you'll see a little bit of change. Unfortunately, it's nothing too drastic. So the rain from earlier in the week did help a bit, but unfortunately we've still got widespread drought, especially along and west of 35, but a little improvement. And that's what it's going to take to uh, knock this drought out. We're not going to do it with one rainfall event. It's going to take several to really eat away at the drought that we've got in place. Currently, again, no rain out there, but we do still have a Good amount of cloud cover that will continue to break up into the afternoon. Currently, we're sitting at 76 at Bulverde, 80 at Port SA, and 80 in Divine. So as we see more sun through the afternoon, we'll see our temperatures jump into the mid to upper 80s. Upper 80s along and south of Highway 90, low to mid 80s north of the Highway 90 corridor. So warm, staying humid with our dew points in the 60s, even upper 60s approaching 70. But it won't at any point feel too uncomfortable or too sticky because we'll have a steady breeze in place for the remainder of the day. South southeast winds 10 to 20 miles per hour gusting up to about 30 miles per hour at times today and then again on Friday. So the wind will be with us tomorrow too. Again, we're monitoring a chance for a few evening showers and thunderstorms on Saturday. Rain free through the day on Sunday and then Sunday night into early Monday. A few more spotty showers and storms can't be ruled out. Otherwise, starting to get a little toasty here with our highs closer to 90 into early next week, guys. I like the 80s. Oh. You like the 80s? Yeah. Well, 80s the 80s was a good decade. Degree. No, not the decade. No, the <laughs> the good weather decade. in the 80s. Oh, I thought you were going like, to crank out some 80s. No, music 90s or are something. the best. Oh, come Anyways. on now. All right. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. David Saucers, thank you very much <laughs> for tossing to me. David Saucers. That's your new nickname. I like Saucers. that. I'm going to get you some bling with it, too. Hey, the Cowboys okay. have the 24th <laughs> overall pick tonight. Perhaps they could go for offensive tackle Tyler Smith, but are the Cowboys looking to trade up? And the Astros and Rangers are chasing that silver boot. Coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The NFL draft starts tonight and it's sounding more and more like the Cowboys are actively seeking to trade up in the first round with their first pick currently number 24. That was indicated during the Cowboys pre-draft press conference supporting owner Jerry Jones earlier statement. They would not be opposed to doing so. I think it's very uh, middle uh, of the draft heavy, you know, that third through the fifth round. Um, you know, first and second a little more thin than we're used to. Uh, but I still think we're going to have a great opportunity uh, to really improve our football team. Uh, whether it's at the 24th pick, if we decide to make a move to go up, then, uh, you know, there's some players that, uh, you know, would fit that category uh, that you might be intrigued by. We don't know who the Houston Tech Texans will draft third overall in the first round tonight, but many mock drafts have them taking a quarterback like this guy, LSU's Derek Stingley Jr., or an offensive lineman. Stingley's grandfather, a former New England Patriot, motivates him to succeed every day. My grandpa, he was receiver, so like ball skills were there, like athleticism was there, and I have the ball skills, in my opinion. Derek Stingley's grandfather, Daryl, played five seasons as a wide receiver for the New England Patriots. In 1978, going for a pass across the middle changed Daryl's life forever. I mean, it's tragic. He went up in the air and at the last second he tensed for it. I think it was a freak accident. The collision severely damaged Daryl's spinal cord and left him a quadriplegic. Derek was five years old when his grandfather passed away in 2007. All the talents and all the lessons have been passed down from him to my dad to me. 
My dad, before every game, he always hits me in my shoulders. He says, play with this. Then he hits me here, he says, think with this. And he says, most importantly, go out there with this. Check out this drone shot of a stage set up in front of the Bellagio in Las Vegas. The 2022 NFL Draft kicks off tonight at 7 live on KSAT 12. Last night in the NBA, the Bucks beat the Bulls 116 to 100 to win that series four games to one. And the Warriors beat the Nuggets 102-98 to take that series four games to one as well. Astros at the Rangers last night, and this is a great way to start off the game. Top of the first inning, leadoff batter Chaz McCormick hits the first pitch of the night to right field and gone for a solo shot. 381 feet, one to nothing. Astros, Texas would go up two to one, but the Strohs come back to win it four to three. And in Texas league play, the Missions beat the Cardinals four to one for their first home win of the season. All right, Missions. Yeah. Yeah, by the time we got off the schneid there, they were like <laughs> exactly. struggling for a while. All right, Larry, thanks. It is NFL Draft Day, and they may not have really planned it, but I'm sure they've got some sort of snacks there at SA Live to help you enjoy your NFL oh, party. Uh, ladies, oh, you know it. You know it. Time. That's what we do here, right? We're all about it. <laughs> all right, how about ice cream? You scream. We all scream for ice cream. Yes, Chad and Anthony, co-founders of Lick Honest Ice Cream, are here, and you have some seasonal flavors that are dropping tomorrow. Tomorrow. But what do you have there? Chad has a little fun day for us <laughs> here little, to uh, top off with yeah. sprinkles. And uh, tomorrow we've got bourbon peach cobbler, Ooh. brand new flavor, and um, return of the original flavor, cilantro lime, yeah. coming tomorrow. You yeah. have me at boozy ice cream. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of boozy, we're taking you on a little hill country getaway for this thirsty Thursday. We'll sample three of their signature cocktails out at this hill country resort. Oh yes, and get ready to chow down on these burgers. That's chicken right there. There is, is that jalapeno? Oh, right in there on oh, that yeah. one. Oh yes, so we are missing? going to Maybe? introduce you to Hat Creek Burger Company and tell you how you <laughs> may get a free burger. <laughs> And uh, mm -hmm. Oh, wow, Fiona, yes. where'd you get to go? Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, yes, all right, I got my Mother's Day a little bit early. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I went to go check out the Mother's Day specials over at the spa at Hotel Contessa. Nice. So we are going to fill you in about that, all that more when SA Life continues. All right, today, tomorrow, morning clouds give way to afternoon sun. Also, a steady wind both Thursday and Friday. As we get into the weekend, low chance of a few evening storms on Saturday. We'll keep an eye on that for you. And then some overnight and early day storms uh, Sunday into Monday of next week. Also watching some isolated chances of rain Wednesday next week. So at least there's chances of rain in the forecast, but nothing as widespread uh, or as heavy as what we saw early in the week. Temperature getting near 90 really through the middle part of next week too guys thank you katie mm -hmm. so you got all excited when uh was it lick is that the name lick of the ice cream the ice cream came yeah, out they have a yeah. location at the pearl yeah so good their and what goat, is your favorite the goat cheese thyme and honey it sounds weird give it a try it is so Ooh. good you could have that i'll stick with that hamburger they had i'll take a burger too sa live starts right now Today on SA Live, make Mother's Day special by creating her a gift by hand with her. Clay Casa is here with some family fun projects. Plus, we are burger building with a Texas restaurant that's giving away free burgers to teachers. Today on SA Live, Mother's Day is coming up and we're going to show you a great way to treat that fabulous mom in your life. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Oh, hello. Yes, it is a very happy Thursday mm -hmm. today. We are all screaming for ice cream yes. today. Just land that right, bring it in, right we'll there for we'll all landing we'll Ted. Yes. <laughs> give it to Jen. Give it all. Oh, he didn't give it to you. He's Good afternoon. It. I'm Fiona Gorstiza. I'm Jen Tobias. Just keep filling <laughs> in for Michael Street. I can't get it. I can't. I tried. <laughs> All right, well, our first guest today, we'll get that, don't worry. Our first guest today are the co-founders of Texas-based Lick Honest Ice Creams. Chad Palmatier and Anthony Sabotic are going to give us a the scoop, right, on the ice cream flavor. 
Cheers. Alicia, we heard her say her favorite was the one that you liked, the goat cheese. Goat cheese, thyme, and honey. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds awesome. amazing. I had that this morning. I did. Breakfast of champions. Okay. All right. So we're going to taste test these ice creams. That's why we've lined it up here like spring break 2020. Okay. All right. And we are going to taste test and see if we can guess what's in it. Now, we have not seen the front of these ice creams where the labels are. We're not looking, right, no, Jen? No. Okay. No. Nope. All right. So we're going to start over here. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. So we're going to taste test this first one. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mmm. Mm. What do you okay. taste? What do you? Oh wow. Very Where creamy. You... Very creamy. Kind like a sweet of cream goat of some cheese. Sort? Any herbs? E is that right? Wait, yeah, goat the goat cheese, cheese is oh, right. Yeah, you're right. Goat cheese. Yeah, it's goat I cheese. can literally yeah. taste the yeah. goat cheese, though. <laughs> I don't know what else is in it. What else is in it? Yeah, uh, what else? Thyme and honey. Oh, that's yeah. a goat cheese yeah. thyme and honey. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the goat cheese thyme and honey. I can see why yeah. she likes that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's, kind of, it's, like, it's kind of like a savory cheesecake sort mm, of thing. Mm, very bit going sweet. Yes. Creamy. All right, so tell us why you chose these flavors and kind of how you come up with new flavor combos. Because yeah, so it changes, we, right? It, they do change. We rotate seasonally a few flavors. So today, some of the ones we brought um, are the seasonal. So we're doing a lot of strawberry right now. We have a carrot cake flavor, tons of uh, local carrots that we can get. And then some of our everyday flavors I brought today, too. So okay. we've got, um, we'll we go do, in. like our honey vanilla bean is made with local honey. Oh, I see nuts. Um, okay. The chocolate that we mm. get is uh, locally made chocolate from that's so good. That's chocolate something. <laughs> wow. Chocolate, chocolate amazingness. I mean, <laughs> yes. What is this that? Is what is it? Do it? Texas cheesecake. Texas cheesecake. So, yeah. Yay. Your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, oh. and local. You know, mm. gotta have Texas pecans mm -hmm. for sure. So we got mm -hmm. those in there. So yeah, we do a lot of that. We try to like take nostalgic flavors and then tie them to local ingredients. So. Yeah. I and love it. Yeah. You two are business partners, but also life partners. So how yes. did this all begin? If you can sum it down. Let's sum it down. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah so we uh, met in New York in nine, or 2000, 1995. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was like, not, <laughs> I was like, not last century. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it feels like it sometimes. No, so we just we both came from small towns, mm -hmm. farming communities, mm -hmm. and when we met in New York, we would travel back and forth to our hometowns. And at some point, we realized that Anthony didn't have great homemade ice cream growing up. Here in Texas, he's strangely. missing that, right? Yeah. So we, you know, over Sad. many years, we just created this idea of, you know, we want to bring these homemade, natural, seasonally inspired flavors back to mm. Texas, and here it is. So we did. So, so we did. 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 Kind of, yeah. All right. Okay. We're gonna yes. taste this third one right here. This looks chocolatey it's as such well. Such a tough task today, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that just chocolate on chocolate? What is that? <laughs> is I mean, I, I taste the chocolate. This, this is the dark chocolate olive oil oh. sea salt. Oh. So Texas olive oil. Because it's different, and, right? Like on. this one. No, so I need they're one They're different more. chocolate bases so for sure. Yeah. So, but it's, yeah. a, it's kind That's of. That's my favorite so far. Okay, yep. good. Just mm -hmm. saying. <laughs> that is my awesome. favorite so far. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! And sustainability is important to you guys, right? Yes. yes. And so um, all of the serveware we use in the shops is all compostable, recyclable, mm -hmm. um, and then also mm -hmm. we source so much locally so most of our ingredients will come from around 250 miles of our shop all the produce and herbs and those type of things wow, that's awesome. and we make all of our um inclusions also so keeping our carbon footprint low in that respect mm -hmm. also yeah so this next one mm -hmm. i tasted a, a coconut a like like <gasps> marshmallowy yeah in you're this right. one mm -hmm. okay very this light. is this is strawberry chocolate swirl, but it is made with coconut milk oh, so it's no. one of our oh, vegan oh, flavors so yeah. Yeah. i love that more texas strawberries for everyone. yeah Okay. Ice cream for everyone. This one, <laughs> I, I can kind of see the strawberry. Yeah. And everything sourced from local farmers, right? Yes, like you all, were saying. Yeah, all the herbs, fruits, okay. veggies, oh, wow. um, all coming from local farmers. This one food is. Artisans. This is like a vacation. Mm. Yes, it is. This is like sitting on a beach. Mm. That, <laughs> what is that? Is that pineapple? This is sweet cream strawberry. Oh, but you're it probably like pineapple. you're having it after the coconut, so you're probably having. <laughs> probably yeah. I didn't <laughs> so cleanse my palate. Coconut can palette. do that. Wow. Yeah, coconut That's can do that. I'm getting a yeah, sugar exactly. high here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And we have to ask what y'all's favorite flavors are. Oh, mine is cilantro lime. So cilantro. original flavor, Chad. Texas sheet cake. Okay. Mm. I eat them all. Mm. <laughs> yeah, end up and cilantro one. lime, that's wow. one of the flavors that's dropping tomorrow, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. It's one of the seasonal flavors. Mm -hmm. So those are coming back. We oh, have goodness. two new seasonals coming tomorrow, which are the cilantro lime and then the brand new flavor bourbon uh, peach cobbler. Bourbon made, peach mm -hmm. cobbler. Made with Garrison Brothers bourbon. Yeah. 
Classic. That last one we just tried, I, you could taste oh, that carrot cake. The carrot cake. Yes. And it's yep. there's no actual cake in it. It's just tons that of carrots. That is just amazing. Wow. Yeah. Perfect. So I'm gonna make you a little. That is okay. Yes. Yeah, so he's in a little. <laughs> Sorry. A, I just like so. Okay. I see. I see it kind of happening right now. But how do you split up the tasks between you? Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, goodness. Um, Anthony's Paper the culinary rocks, guy, <laughs> for sure. I'm the culinary yeah. guy. Okay. Yeah. He's the culinary guy. This is. Mm -hmm. He's crafted this. The ice cream, is kind of the star. Okay. Um, and I've we both used our backgrounds. I came from a design and branding background, so we kind of just, you know, combine forces and. Sounds like a great. Still to team. the day, do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. most days. Yeah. <laughs> most days. <laughs> Not every day. A good combination. And if you guys want to do your topping. Yes, we're gonna oh. finish this up, there and you know. uh, people can find you at the Pearl where, and uh, oh, find out. And so your flavors obviously change, and tomorrow is the big day where Tomorrow's you have some new some changes yeah. there. All Brand right. Brand new season tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for more information. <laughs> of course, on Lick Honest Ice Cream, just head to salive.com and click on the ask scene on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. Okay. Well, you know, having ice cream, you kind of did that, right? I mean, when you were a kid and you went to the movies, oh, you yeah. got some ice cream, right? Totally. So, you know, that got us thinking, what is the first movie you remember seeing in theaters? What's yours? Okay, it was a drive-in. Okay, oh, fun. I, I, my parents. Okay, I was in the back seat all by myself, and it was one of the Jaws movies. <laughs> oh, scary! I, I blame them for my fear <laughs> of the ocean and sharks. I, I was really fear. little. Yeah, oh, yeah. What were you thinking? That's a scary one. That back seat was pretty dark and pretty big yeah. by myself. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Oh my God! Uh, don't tell mom the babysitter's done. <laughs> That's the one that comes to mind that's far back as I can remember. But that was fun. That was a good one. I still like that movie. Right? So yes. let us know. What's that movie that you remember watching in the theater or drive-in? Yes, or drive-in. Drive yeah. <laughs> yes, at Live Case on, on Facebook and Twitter. And you may see that answer a little later in the show. All right, well, from delicious ice cream to a hill country getaway, on today's Thirsty Thursday, we take you to Tapatio Springs Hill Country Resort. You know, it's co-owned by the king of country, Who? George, George Strait. <laughs> so I had to go. I had to go. Take a look. Tapatio Springs, uh, you know, we consider it to be the gateway to the Texas Hill Country, offering all that the uh, the area has to offer. It's an easy reach to the uh, to the Texas Hill Country as well as to San Antonio. The Texas Hill Country is known for those gorgeous views. Today, we take you to Tapatio Springs Hill Country Resort for a look at their signature drinks inside the bar. bartender here at Tapatio Springs and today we're going to be making our famous margarita, our George's Roses and our Hill Country Peach. All right, we're going to start with our famous margarita. We're going to start off with one ounce of lime juice, three quarters ounce of simple syrup. We're going to move on to our tequila. It's going to be the Cotico Blanco. This, of course, is George Strait's tequila, our co-owner. have to support him. We're going to do one ounce and a half. All right. To finish it up, you're just going to do a quarter of an ounce, or, I'm sorry, three quarters of an ounce of our orange liqueur. All right. Going to salt our glass and get some ice in there. And then you shake. All right, then you garnish with a lime. And there you have our margarita. Next, we're gonna make our George's Roses. For this cocktail, you're gonna start off with some fresh chopped strawberries. And you're gonna add one ounce of fresh grapefruit juice. Three quarters of simple syrup. All right, and we're gonna give that a muddle. Next, we're going to move on to the Cotico Rosa Tequila. This is actually a huge favorite at the club. It's actually going to be our Reposado that they age in a wine barrel. So you get a little bit of a pink color to it and a slightness of sweetness to it. We're going to do an ounce and a half of that. All right. And then we're going to go three quarters of our orange liqueur one more time. So you're going to add your ice. And shake. Strain that over a cup of ice. And then we're just gonna garnish with a fresh strawberry. And that is our George's Roses. All right, for the last cocktail, we're gonna do our Hill Country Peach. This one's very popular around the club. It's nice and sweet. For this one, you're gonna start off with two ounces of gin. Right, 
Then you're gonna move on to one ounce of peach liqueur. We're gonna do three quarters of fresh lemon juice. And on this one, just a half an ounce of simple syrup. I'm gonna top that off with a few dashes of our peach bitters. Add ice and shake. <laughs> We're gonna strain into a frosted martini glass. And this, the garnish is just gonna be a nice fresh lemon peel. Well, Jonathan, that was amazing. These drinks look great. I'm gonna sample, but please tell me about what you guys have going on, because you have a lot coming up here. That's right, yeah. May's gonna shape it up to be a busy month. Uh, we've got uh, three big events coming up. First of all, off is our, our big concert event benefiting the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. Uh, we'll have the Texas Jam Band here featuring members of George Strait's Ace in the Hole Band, along with uh, special guest John Michael Whitby and Bubba Strait. And uh, we'll do that right here on the event lawn, We're serving, uh, serving dinner uh, with the concert. Check us out. It's going to be an awesome event. If you haven't gotten your tickets, please go check it out right now. And then Mother's Day is coming up. What's in store here for Mother's Day? Yeah, Mother's Day, we've got a special Mother's Day brunch that we do that's just to die for. So absolutely bring your mother out. Make your reservations now because it will fill up quickly. All right, Jonathan. Well, thank you so much for more information. On top of Tio Springs Hill Country Resort, you can head over to SALive.com, click the As Seen on SALive tab, or scan the QR code that is on your screen. Cheers. Should Cheers. we grab a drink? Yes. <laughs> Shall we? Yeah. Mm. SA Live continues with a trip to the spa for Mother's Day. I check out the specials happening at a local hotel. And did you know that you have to update your bathroom for safety reasons? How you can do that and get a deal at the same time. Keep it here on SA Live. <laughs> 